Most gracious Father, look upon us as we come before you this morning. Hide not your love from us. Deliver us from evil. Help us to grow and be the soldiers of the cross for our beloved Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We bow before you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? We turn with me to the screen as we uh, sing our first song this morning, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. I fain would take my stand The shadow of a mighty rock Within a weary land A home within the wilderness A rest upon the way From the with me please. Dear most wonderful God and Father, giver of life and all that we have, you have called us to be your children. We stand here this morning to answer that call to worship your holy name with all the love that is within us. One day you will bring your kingdom to this world and we will spend our days bathed in all your love and glory. We come before you this morning with our hearts full of hope and peace and joy, knowing full well that you are our God and we are your people. Lead us on the path of righteousness. Help us to gird ourselves with the armor of grace, the shield of faith and the knowledge of the scriptures as our weapon. Your love for us and ours for you as our strength and courage to preserve, pers persevere through all all the tough and terrible times in our lives. And when the night comes and the battles wane, we find our rest and peace with always within your arms. One day there will be no more battles to fight, no more wars or grumblings of wars. There will be no more pain or suffering or sorrow. There will be no illness and no death. In that way we will find only rest and peace and we... And we will always be in the comfort and joy of your arms. Be with us this day and help us to learn to understand so that we might be useful to you in bringing those days to come soon. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may be the people you desire us to be. Give us the ability and the opportunity to grow. For we pray in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
You may be seated as we go back to our screen for our responsive reading from Psalms 119, uh, uh, 17 through 20. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Amen. A blessed reading of God's word. Our praise hymn this morning, Heaven Came Down. memory verse is uh, uh, this month from Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. And good to see everyone here this morning. And uh, uh, the sun shining. 
It, I was supposed to be, uh, well, we're supposed to have a little break, and I, I, we're praying that it'll, it'll be longer. But I, I just want to tell you that uh, I, I, we've got to race through today. I'm going to do a short sermon, and we're going to really race through today because I've got my fantasy football picks, and I need to get home to watch those. <laughs> Nobody brought the gun. <laughs> All right. Wednesday night Bible study. And I want to welcome everybody that uh, watching us from home, and we're glad that uh, you're spending this time time with us. And and you can know for sure that we're not going to race through anything uh, because of fantasy football uh, or 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 anything else. So you can uh, you can be rest assured about that. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Wednesday night Bible study at six uh, six o'clock on Wednesday night. We have a great uh, great time. Tuesday after school, our our kid uh, fusion program beginning at uh, three thirty or or when the kids uh, come in. We're working on the the new sound. So I heard that uh, uh, the sound has uh, made some, uh, much improvement last week. We're waiting on some more equipment to come in and and uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, that that'll improve prove. Uh, uh, the quality uh, of uh, your your time with us as well, uh, and then I want to make sure that everyone knows that after uh, church tonight, since we're uh, today, since we're not going to uh, go to the fantasy football thing, uh, we're going to have a baptism instead, which is more important uh, and and much more fun and much more enjoyable. I don't have a fantasy football team. Because uh, I don't do that. I, I like to watch baseball, but uh, I, I just, I, I had to say that because, you know, there are two things that I, I uh, the, the only really two things that I enjoy watching on TV is the news and, and uh, 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 baseball. And uh, they've both been flooded this week with uh, all this, these, uh, I guess there's two or three different uh, big fantasy uh, football stuff going on. And and uh, picking your teams and how you can win money and boy if it's not one thing it's another isn't it it's just terrible so uh, uh we're going to have a great time after after church uh with the uh, baptism and uh, uh and we're praying that the sun will still be shining i i know rick uh, told us uh, before that uh uh Let's see, I've got to figure out how to put that exactly right. But Rick said before that he was ready to be baptized. The only thing is that he didn't want to break ice <laughs> to to do that. We came close to, 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 to today, but uh, uh, we, we won't do that either. So we have, uh, uh, we're going to have a great time today. Puppets are going to be, uh, uh, do we have a puppet day yet? Not, not yet at a puppet day. Tuesdays are after school programs. If you have kids, I'd like you know uh, send the kids and and bring them and have a have a good time because uh, then we feed the kids. We we have uh, hot dogs and hamburgers and all kinds of stuff that comes out. We have a we have a great time uh, on Tuesday after school with a with a kid fusion program. Any other announcements besides uh, getting, there's our Kid Fusion up there on the screen, and you can get out in touch with me at www.oilregionlive.com if you uh, want to go on the internet, if you want to give that uh, link to somebody, www.oilregionlive.com, and that will get them to the uh, internet where they can pick up uh, the programs uh, at other times, and uh, uh, and then if you want to get in touch with us here at the Church Community Bible Church, uh, you can call me at 967 or 814-967-3628, or you can write me at P.O. Box 41, Titusville 16354. And I do get, uh, I do get quite a, a, a few uh, uh, calls. Let's see if I can get back uh, to where I'm supposed to be. And, and uh, uh, again, I want to thank. And, and if you want to write me on the Internet, uh, you can go to, uh, uh, where am I at on the internet? Uh, at uh, at, at cbc.tville at yahoo.com. There we are. 
Community Bible Church, Reverend Dr. Rudolph G. Babcock, Pastor. And you can write us at P.O. Box 41 or you can go to cbc.tv. And I'd like, to, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to find out uh, if, if the sound is, is uh, coming and doing, any, doing better, how you're doing. Uh, what are some of the things that we can do to improve uh, our, our, uh, uh, the quality of our program and, and uh, what, we, what we bring? I, I know a lot of you uh, watch uh, out there, and I know a lot of you watch because we uh, uh, we preach the gospel uh, I, of, of Jesus Christ. We don't make any bones about it. We don't try to uh, take it in any other different direction. So uh, please uh, feel free to give us a, uh, to write me and uh, uh, to let me know how you're doing and what we can pray for. And uh, all right. And then, and then I want to thank uh, the stream and Armstrong uh, Cable for making us available uh, for all of you at home. Any praises this week? I'm, I'm glad we got some rain, but at our place, I got huge puddles of water sitting around and lots of, lots of rain uh, down by us, uh, closer to the lake. And, but I was glad we got, it looks like we got just enough rain uh, to uh, water the seed out there uh, on uh, the field. I see the grass is growing and, and we got just enough rain not to wash the seed away or make a big problem out there and, and so that's going to be really good. I guess we're going to get back to our normal temperature sometime during the middle of the week. So we'll see the grass grow even more. But that's a, that's a praise because I was worried that we would get the grass out there and it was starting to come up and it would dry out and, and uh, we would lose our seed. But uh, anyone else this morning? Have a praise. Yes. Jane. Um, I just got news that, um, everybody's that everybody's stable down in Florida at, at your daughter's home. All right. Because that was... Uh, all right, and that was a that was a close call as uh, uh, she had to deliver uh, last night on an emergency uh, prematurely, and and we're just now we've been in prayer this morning, and we're just finding out now that uh, every the baby and and everybody is okay. So that's a praise, right? Yes, and that uh, they're they're all doing well. So thank God for that, and, and I'm glad that we all went into prayer this morning and got the, the good news. Anyone else this morning have a praise? God working miracles and wonders in your life. How about prayer requests? We want to continue to keep uh, Stephanie and and uh, the babe and Elijah. Okay. And Elijah in our prayers. Any other prayer requests? Jane's mom and dad. Uh, Jean's family. Okay. Anyone else this morning have a prayer request? A lot of stuff going on, right? A lot of stuff in the world. So we want to we want to um, continue to keep our country in prayer and what's going on uh, 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 around us. Keep our church in prayer. For our growth and and uh, for our finances and and because they're uh, we're struggling there as well. All right. Anyone else this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Dear most gracious heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us and we thank you for all that you do for us. All around, we should be seeing the miracles of your of your hand, the wonders of of all that you're doing around us. Truly. It's a wonderful time to be living. It seems like that we are drawing close to, to the end times. And things may get rougher. And things sometimes are becoming more difficult for us to understand how as Christians we're supposed to act and be. We ask you to, to give us the, the guidance and, and instruction. We ask you this morning to, <clears throat> to uh, um, we thank you for, for the good news for Stephanie and Elijah. 
We ask you to keep them both in, in prayer, Jane and Jane's mom and Jean's family. Lord, we just ask you to continue to keep the church church in prayer and keep our finances in, in, in the palm of your hand and watch over us, guide us, help us to grow, help us to spread the gospel, help us to be all that we can be. Continue to, to be with this program as it goes out over the airways and over the internet that it will reach people and people will come to know your son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that people will will come to grow and grow in strength uh, uh, in their knowledge of the Bible and of the scriptures and, and, and your love for all of us. We ask you to continue to be with this country, Lord, that, that it's a strange time when we have we have somebody who swears to be our enemy and swears death and destruction to us and to Israel and yet our government turns around and gives them billions and hundreds of billions of dollars and it's confusing to many of us. We see the country that we have come to love and know go in a direction that many of us don't understand. We just ask you to continue to, to be with those that are trying to make this country go in, a, in the direction that it needs to go. But as I read your scripture, as I understand, you will even bring this nation to its knees. And that's why it's so important for us to, to go around and make sure that we are bringing all who will listen to understand that it's so vitally important, especially now, that we get to work and we go to get out and we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to be with those that are watching at home, that you will watch over them, give them courage, give them strength, give them the ability to live the life that you want them to live, to, to grow them through this ministry and through their lives. Help watch over their families. Help guide them. Give them the direction that they need. Watch over their prayers and their family as well. Be with us this morning. As we worship you from the bottom of our heart. With all of our love. In Jesus name. And for his sake we pray. Amen.
My scripture this morning is from Matthew 6, 19 through 34. So if you have your Bibles at home and here in the sanctuary, you can open to Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 34. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, that ye shall what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Of you, by taking thought, can you add one cubit into, unto his stature? In other words, can you make yourself one centimeter even taller just by thinking about it? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glories was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Wherewithal shall we be clothed? You know, if that was written today, we might have to add, or what uh, TV program is on this week? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought for tomorrow, for the tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We were just saying that song. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you can see up here in the front, you see that we have two bud vases. There's a white carnation, a red carnation, and, and, uh, and a red rose, a red bud in each of them. They each have a, a significance. This afternoon, we're, after church, we're going to have a baptism, and I wanted to let you know because we have our baptism service at, uh, at, at a pool, and so we don't have it on TV, but one, one day maybe we will. But you ought to know that how the red rose and the carnations are represented. The white rose, or the white carnation, we generally give to the person, which means... Is, it represents their mother, the mother that uh, is pure and brought them into uh, this world. The red carnation represents the father. Our fathers are, are told to, to love their family as Christ loved the church, willing to lay down their life for the church. Our fathers have done that through time. 
in this country, going off to war, doing all the things that are necessary. The red rose. The red rose is symbolic of, of, of something that has the potential to open up and blossom and be beautiful. To be perfect, actually. And I think there's nothing more. What is the, the poem? A rose is a rose is a rose is a rose. You can't say much more than that. It's fragrant and the petals open up and it can be it can be perfect and it can be beautiful. And that's the life that we we expect, that we want for each person coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. He we want perfection. We want that person to have a beautiful life. We want a person to have a rich life. And we discover that being obedient to God is where real riches are. I watched Joel the other night. He had a wonderful counseling message. He told things in his counseling message over the TV that I have said to patients many hundreds of times before. The only difference is that I never preached them as if they were a message from God to be preached to a congregation instead of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. His message was, be all that you can be. Wow, that's such a great message. And then he went into how to accomplish that. And whatever, what I discovered him telling the audience is that we can become all that we desire to become by finding it within ourselves. And that's where he lost me. Because that's a self-help theology. Basically he said that God wants us to become all we can become but we have to find that within ourselves. Work, strive, focus your energy on becoming sounds wonderful, right? But Jesus tells us to focus our energy on laying up for ourselves treasures. Wow. I bet you never thought you'd hear this pastor saying that. That Jesus says that we should focus on laying up for ourselves treasures. Because I am against seed faith and all this other stuff. But that's what we find out. But lay up for yourselves treasures. Ha ha. Here's the cash word. In heaven. Now you got me. Now I'm, we're on the right page. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. But we should lay up. I just hate all these TV evangelists spreading this false gospel of self-help and seed help. The storing up for yourself riches down here on earth. As if we are supposed to be full of these earthly wonders and pleasures. I teased earlier, or maybe I, I made some angry. I hope I made some angry when I was jesting about rushing through the sermon so I could get to my fantasy football game. But I promise you there are many people, including pastors this morning, doing and thinking just that. I saw another preacher take out a $5 bill. And from a pulpit supposedly uh, reserved for preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, told people that the $5 bill was also a seed. Now I'm going to tell you that no human being can make a seed. Do you know that? We're, our technology is, is, is so advanced, right? That we, we know how to just dial up on a machine and make uh, tomato seeds. We know, how to, we know how to do that, right? You know that that's how sophisticated we are these days with all our intelligence, with all of our science and know-how. We can make some genetic changes to seed, but we cannot even make seed. That little bit of life inside the tiniest of mustard seeds cannot be recreated by man. I thought we had all this power. That little bit of life in a coco de mer, which is the largest seed in the world, cannot be recreated by man. No matter what you do, you can't make by the power of your mind or might a five pound bag of seed into a ten pound bag. You must do something like put a weight or dirt into it. 
So the laying up and the storing up and the energy spent in obtaining seed benefit here on earth is contrary to what God wants us to be doing. In our scriptures, the Lord discusses the subject of money. This is something many people don't like the preacher to talk about. Our Lord says that we are to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. How can we do that? Well, instead of putting it in a bank in Switzerland or down the street, put it in heaven by giving it to the Lord's work down here. But make sure it is in the Lord's work that you place it. You ought to investigate everything you give give to. Make sure that you are giving to that which will accommodate, accumulate a treasure for you in heaven. If it is used for the propagation of the gospel and to get out the word of God, it becomes legal tender in heaven. And this is one of the ways we gather treasure in heaven. Perhaps you're saying, but I don't give for that reason. I would say to you, but you ought to. Because our Lord said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Then Jesus gives this reason for where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. I see these people with these very expensive uh, four-wheelers. And I can tell you that's where their heart is most of the time. I see these people with the very expensive all-terrain pickup trucks and jeeps. And I can tell you that's where their heart is most of the time. I see people with very expensive boats. And I can tell you that that's where their heart is most of the time. I see people with huge bank accounts. And I can tell you that that's where their heart is and their attention is most of the time. Most of these have nothing, most of these people have nothing laid up for themselves in heaven. Because their heart is down here on this earth. And where your heart is, that's where your time and energy is as well. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Maybe we should stay there for a while and understand that. Then what, what can we profit if we gain everything? All the wonderful things here on earth. I mean, there seems to be just a race going on. To have as many of these things as you can possibly have hanging out of your garage. But what does it profit of? If we spend all of our time and all of our money and all of our effort gathering these things to hang out of our garage. So we have all kinds of things to do on Sunday except for go to church. If it costs us our very soul. But woe unto you that are rich. For you have received your consolation. Jesus tells us in many places that not that he's talking about being it's bad to be rich or that you're a bad person to be rich. But he tells us that when we spend our energy and we have all these wonderful things, we spend our energy to be rich, to make money, to have all these things, and, and we use that to, to have this wonderful stuff, and we do all this wonderful stuff here on earth that, that we'll have our reward here. Instead of in heaven. Jesus tries to teach us that if we choose to have our riches and our pleasures down here on this earth. That is where they will stay. And there will be no reward for you any place else. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's, it's, it's just interesting how God uses those words. Or Christ uses those words. As a thief in the night. I mean, he's gonna, you know, I mean, we're talking about, you know, laying up for yourselves someplace where they won't be, won't be stolen. And here comes Jesus. He's going to come as a thief in the night. To, and in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works. And, 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 and then I want you to follow the, the, the last part. But all that stuff you've worked for. All those things that you've, you've, you've struggled and, 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 and 
and, and done without other things to pay for and to, and to have sticking out of your garage. What does it say? And the works that are in there shall be burned up. None of those things are going any place. All your wonderful stuff is going to be burned up. That expensive four-wheeler is not leaving this earth. And you are not going to get a chance to enjoy it beyond this life. Because you enjoyed it here instead of working to bring the loss to salvation. This short period of joy will be all you get. And instead, your eternity will be that of wailing and a gnashing of teeth. So shall it be at the end of the world. And I think that we're coming close to that. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. If you get enough treasure laid up in heaven, you are certainly going to think a lot about heaven. But if it is in the bank, your thoughts are going to be on the bank. I know. We have grandparents here who have spent a lot of their earthly treasure to see that their children find salvation. Their grandchildren and their children find salvation. And I know, I can tell you, that their focus isn't on the money in the bank, but on their bank that's in heaven with their family members there. There is an ever-present danger of worshipping the things of man or mammon rather than the things of God. We live in that world today where it's difficult for us to do that. We were talking in Sunday school today about, about how difficult it is for a Christian to act. Uh, it was a very in insightful uh, a part of uh, of our Sunday school and our discussion. But how are we to act? Some people may think that if a Christian stands up for the things that, that he believes is right, we may be acting foolish. Others think that if we don't stand up for the things that we believe in, that we might be acting foolish. It's, it's a difficult time that we live in. But no matter what, how you look at it, I think that no matter what it is, that as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, if you're that kind of a Christian today, no matter what you do, the world is going to make you look foolish. I don't think you can, I don't think no matter how you, how you behave on one hand or the other, that you're going to escape that. Our Lord tells us that we are not to give much thought to our material needs. But yet I find that most of us spend most of our time worrying about our material needs. For example, the Lord says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? I mean, who ever heard of, of the, the birds gathering into barns? Or building bank accounts. In other words, aren't you worth much more than the birds? For many people out there, I think the answer is no. No, you're not because for many of you out there, you are living your lives instead of living for our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. You are living your life instead of living for Jesus Christ. So you transfer the caregiving from God to you being the caregiver of yourself. We just went through a, a situation here at the, at, at the church where one of our dear ladies' daughter had a a tragedy, a premature birth, where water broke, she started to bleed, had to get into the hospital right away. She went into prayer. 
we went into prayer. Do we really want to live in a world where that doesn't happen? Do we really want to live in a world where we, we come to that emergency and we just depend on ourselves? That we don't need God? I mean, I, I can't imagine trying to, to, to say, oh, okay, um, I don't need God. But that's what so many people around us are doing. They need their four-wheelers, but they don't need God. And then when they need God, they only need God when they, when they want to use God. In this case, God's answer was almost immediate, wasn't it? And it needed to be immediate. And was it an answer from anybody or anything other than from God? Certainly God had to be involved. And yet for many of us we see that there is a God around but yet we don't want to live our life by turning it over to God. We want to live our lives the way we want to live our lives. We want to have our, our own things. The thing is, the thing is that we give up is the idea that God says if you want to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Don't call on me. That wouldn't have been fun, would it? We've all been there. So we have to be careful that we don't want to transfer the caregiving. And understand what I'm saying there. But I think that God gets to a point where he says, okay, if you want to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. But if you want me to take care of you, then there's certain things that we have to do. Personally, for me, I'm much more happy. I feel much more safe knowing I have a God to call on. Two days ago, you would have never believed you needed God for that, would you? Two days ago, you didn't need God for that. But last night, in the middle of the night, you needed God. And we all come to that point. And we will all come to that point as this world comes down, crashing down around us, as we, as we come to a point that, that there's going to be a point in all of our lives where we're going to have to, 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 to come to that point. The birds can't sow. And the birds cannot reap. Birds cannot gather anything into the barns. But you and I can. We are to sow and to reap and to gather with the same abandon that the birds have. The little bird is trusting God to take care of him. And we are to trust God as well. This does not mean that we shouldn't exercise judgment because God has given us this ability. We are not to go through life with material things becoming the focus of our lives because that focus often becomes a burden to us. Some years ago, I had to do an anthropological uh, study and I went up into northern Canada, uh, way up into the northern part of Canada where there's, uh, uh, you have the Inuit Indians or Inuit Eskimos across the top and then, and then across the populated, more populated part of, of Canada in, in, in the Midwest part is your uh, Crow Indians and, and above that is, is a mix of, of, uh, uh, of Crow and, and uh, Inuit. And I was up, I, I was way up in, in the north. And I was doing study because that population had a, uh, had a, had a huge uh, uh, increase over the last couple of decades in suicides. And so I was up there doing a, doing a study on, on suicides as a cultural phenomenon. And I had a, 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 a I met with a lady who said that she would talk with me. Uh, and she was I, maybe the oldest woman in, in the community, but she was a very old uh, uh, crow lady. And I asked her, why? What's going on? And she says, well, we used to be happy. 
When I was a child, a little person, we were happy. We didn't have anything. But we didn't know we didn't have anything. We went out, we hunted, we took care of the things we want, we took care of our families, we loved one another, and our, our villages grew. All of a sudden, somebody comes along and says, and brings us electricity. Then we discovered, hey, we didn't have everything that we thought we needed. Somebody told us we needed electricity. So we found all the wonderful things we could have when we had electricity. But we had a problem. We didn't know how to pay for electricity because we didn't know how to make money. But we all had to have electricity. The biggest cultural change for them was all of a sudden learning that they needed to have more stuff than they ever had before. And the way to get that was by having electricity. And the way to have electricity was you had to have money. Next came gasoline, she said. And you still had to have money. But she said, we as a people, we, we didn't know how to make, make money. We, we knew how to make families. We, we knew how to hunt. We knew how to make our clothes. We knew how to make our shelters. We knew how to be happy. But we didn't know how to make money. There's nothing up here what to do to make money. We didn't know how to make money. So we found it difficult to have electricity and to have gas and to have the four-wheelers. And that's why she said there was so much suicide. Because when we were happy, when we didn't have anything, when we were happy, we didn't have suicide. Suicide was unheard of in our culture. But now we can have all these things and we're miserable and we're committing suicide one right after another. In a lot of ways I think that we have done the same thing. We know more and better how to make money. But we become, we've come, moved into a society where we commit spiritual suicide. And we are falling by the wayside, right and left. In an attempt to, to have the electricity, to have the gas, and to have all of the things that are supposed to make us happy. It's, 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 it's hard to imagine how in the 1500s, how anybody was happy by today's standard. But they were. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. In this verse, the question is asked, why take ye thought for raiment? Think of the time that is consumed by both men and women when it comes to buying clothes. And almost everyone has had the experience at some time of saying, I can't go uh, tonight, I don't have the right suit or the right dress to wear. Well, consider the lilies of the field. They cannot toil or spin, and yet God takes care of them. Of course, a Christian should dress as well as he can. To be slovenly in dress or in any action is not honoring God. Slovenly means lazy or, 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 or disheveled. Our Lord called attention to the beauty of the flowers and how they were dressed even above the beauty of King Solomon's court. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field which is today, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not be much, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? We are not to be overly anxious about the things of this world. Material things should not be the goal of our life. But we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things around us shall be added unto us. Take there for no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Take no thought for tomorrow means uh, no anxious thought. He takes care of the flowers and the birds and he will take care of you but the important thing is to put Christ first in your life as someone has said today 
is to tomorrow that we worried about yesterday. How true that is for many of us. So here we come all the way back to the very beginning with a sermon from one person, a counseling message on on how you can be all that you can be without ever quoting a scripture. And I've spent this hour quoting scripture and the reality is that if you follow these instructions, I promise you, You'll be a much happier all you can be for all eternity. Because this is the way to be all you can be. Put your faith, your hope, and everything in our God and in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hymn of invitation this morning is Just As I Am.
Just as you are. Will our usher please come forward? Will you please rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have given us. Lord, you give us so much. We ask you to make us be responsible for that which you give us so that we use it to Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that is returned to you. For we have a big job ahead to spread the gospel to all the world around us. To reach out. To let people know that your son died for us. That you loved us so much. That you gave your son for our salvation. Help us be all that we can be. Help us be good stewards of all that's returned into your storehouse. I thank you so much for each and every gift, for each and every prayer, for all the time that is spent in, in working with our children and developing programs and working out here to, to be the church that we need to be in this community. To spread the gospel to those that are watching at home and on the internet. Help us continue to grow. Continue to reach people. Make us strong. Strong in the word. Steadfast. So that we will know not only who we are. But who we need to be as well. Give us each the opportunity this week to, to witness to someone. To spread the gospel. To invite someone to church. I ask you to keep your hand upon everyone that's at home. Watching us and here. To keep your hand upon us and keep us safe. To especially keep us your hand upon our children. And keep them safe. To watch over their teachers and those that are providing care. That they will not be led astray in the wrong direction. Give us the courage. To open our mouths where we should. To live the lives that is pleasing to you. To challenge the world where it needs to be challenged. Guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Before we start, I'm just going to have... Have uh, Rick and Rick and Abby come forward. So in a minute we're gonna we're gonna go. I see we're losing our son, as the weatherman said that we might. But uh, um, I just want to take this time because right behind 
right and you stood in the right places we didn't even rehearse that we just stood in the right places there there's there's one that's going to be and that says keep love in your heart and that's what we want for you because abby abby said that she asked jesus to come into her heart no just leave that there and we have one over here that says Every day is a gift from God. And you've been a gift to us as well. You are a gift, as each and every one is. I appreciate the both of you so much coming to salvation. Rick had been saved but never been baptized as a born-again believer, as, as an adult believer. Never wanting to be a member of a church, right? Now is asked to be a member of the church upon his, upon his baptism. And I'm going to ask you, since we're going out to be baptized, and I think there's nothing going to stop us, that upon his baptism, do you accept Rick and the membership of the church? Review. Dear Lord, we thank you for, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your love, and we thank you for for dedicated people who love you and want to follow in your way to be all that they can be. We ask you to be with Abby and help her to grow up in a way that's pleasing to you. That she's going to grow up in an entirely different world than I grew up in, Lord, and it's going to be harder for her. And I ask you to be with this congregation to give them the courage and the strength and all that's necessary to help Abby grow up in a troubling, a trying, difficult world. Lord, I ask you to keep your hand upon Rick. His health is coming and going, and, and I thank God that today he's, he's in good health. But there's times I know that Rick is praying, even when his health is not good. We ask you to keep your hand upon him as well. Give him the strength and the courage to lead his family so that all may be with him when you come to redeem us all. These things I ask in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we sing our closing, I'm going to ask you to come forward and, and uh, give the hug and the gift and, uh, and, and the right hand of, of fellowship to, to these two as we get them ready to, to get you baptized before it starts raining, <laughs> and you too. All right. <laughs> well.